found in an abandoned village, and it also happens to be Hungry Ghost Month. So let's talk about some of the superstitions, shall we? Hey, it's Melikat. If you're into animals, budget travel, or even exploration, come into my channel. Action! Since we're exploring an abandoned village, I guess it doesn't hurt to uh, gear up just a bit more. That said, I got a camping light instead. Oops. Remember how earlier I said it's Hungry Ghost Month? There's actually a few names. Uh, Ghost Month, Hungry Ghost Festival, Hungry Ghost Month. Basically, it's like Chinese Halloween all month long. That's when um, yeah, the spirits are supposed to roam the earth and you're supposed to pay tributes to them and you don't hang out late. In a way, we're kind of going against that. Not intentionally, so we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts. Wait a minute, the Salvation Army Youth Camp? around an abandoned ghost town who's gonna go there for that not so sure about that because it was just raining so there's a lot of snails slugs and frogs gotta be careful make sure not to step on them But before looking at our first point of entry, we just saw some very cute frogs. Okay, Again, being super careful not to step on any snails or anything. Of the many uh, abandoned places in Hong Kong, I think this is quite special because in the distance, Actually, people still live here. Um, yeah, it's more like people who have like a suburb kind of countryside life. But it's really hard to find the point of entry because this area is quite large. Nope, dead end. Support my channel. If you like my content and want to keep my channel alive, all the information's in the description. Thanks, guys. And because it is supposed to be a very creepy, abandoned town, or like an abandoned island. So my guess is that this place is quite big. Speaking of the do's and don'ts during Ghost Month, one of them is don't wear red or black. Red attracts unnecessary attention, even for urbex. And black is a color that spirits like to attach onto. I guess it's because it's a morbid color, I'm guessing. Yeah, and supposedly we're not supposed to go out late at night because that's when ghosts during this month is the most active. So you don't want to bump into them. The weird thing about this place is the houses are abandoned, but you'll see that some street lamps are still on. Okay, gonna go back to the house that we walk by. And another thing that we hear elders say all the time is don't take photos at night because this is an open invitation for uh, supernaturals to join you in the photo taking opportunity. Hmm. Another one is don't go to the beach. Wait a minute. Okay, it says the beach is over there. 
the reason for that is because there's the water ghosts, so they'll drown you so they can claim your body. Wow, this place is pretty run down. But I'm surprised there's so many things in here. Mainly garbage, though. That's characteristic of the abandoned places here in Hong Kong. Look at the tiles. Super retro. I'm not gonna walk on these stairs. They look way too fragile. Along with this ceiling. Mm -mm. Is a hunting too? Hungry ghost month or not, uh, elders always say, don't walk up against walls because that's where the spirits hang around. You don't want to get dragged or sucked in. Let's go. Is it me or does it seem like we've done a lot of the things we shouldn't already? But for some reason, when I go to these abandoned places, I actually don't feel that it's so much hmm, scary. It is creepy, but it's more like a very lonely feeling as opposed to outright scary. Oh, good Lord, I feel bad for the mailman. Quite sure this is not our destination, but it's an accidental nice view. Wow. But gotta be super careful. <laughs> I think some folks live on the boats. That's why you hear the dog barking from one of the boats. I think what makes abandoned places so scary, especially at night, is... Does that kind of look like a person floating at a glance? As far as I'm concerned, this place used to be a fish, fishing village. But this is not our destination, so we're walking back out. Hey, Mr. Snail. <laughs> what I like about exploring these creepy abandoned ghost towns, it's that um, it's a lot bigger than I thought, which means there's a lot more places to see and it also means there's a lot more places for me to get lost in which we are right now Organizing. frankly with the random straight lights that's on i sometimes can't tell if it's an old house or an abandoned place at a glance something you don't know about me when i'm in an abandoned place i would just stare at a place and just stand there Maybe just absorbing it all in or kind of just being spooked out and just keeping my eyes open at the same time in preparation for somebody darting out the door or the window. Frankly, when I'm peeping in like that, I don't know what I'm expecting to see. Still can't find our destination. Hmm. Okay, just making sure we're not going to step on anything. There's a lot of snails and frogs on the floor. Okay, just about. Speaking of ghost towns and creepy abandoned places, are we looking at one right in front of us? I think we got it. It's right there. That's the abandoned village. <gasps> yes! Yes, yes, yes! I don't know why, but the red flashing lights creep me out. And the question is, 
how do I go there? I think the entrance is in front of us, but then usually these places might have residents or guards, so it's just good to turn off all the lights so that we don't get spotted. But guess what? It turned out after all this walking, relying on my night vision, and it turned out that wasn't the way to get in. There's people that could possibly see us or CCTV, so we're gonna take another route. Went to two different places and it wasn't the right entrance, but I've been here before, so I know they weren't the right entrances. Mm. What is better than GPS? Calling a friend who lives nearby who can see you from their apartment? Ma? If I got him all I don't know. So it turned out we just missed it by one turn at the very beginning. So here we go again. And this time we got in. First thing we saw was a Tode Gong Gong. When you see these gods placed to uh, protect the place, just bow and pay respect whenever you see one. Well, in our quest to explore this abandoned ghost town, I think we've got a lot to cover. It's ginormous. If you ask me, I think it's actually quite rare in Hong Kong that you have like an entire abandoned town because we don't have a lot of land. Yeah, so this place is actually really quiet. There's like nobody around. This used to be quite a big village here. From what I know, I think this place was abandoned because the original residents here were bunted out and they were told to reside elsewhere on the island and uh, I think due to a lot of corruption and stuff um, the development in here still didn't really get to happen yet so it's just stuck I guess but this place has a long history another thing you shouldn't do on Hungry Ghost Month is picking up money from the floor is said to be uh, bribes for ngau tao ma mi, ngau tao meaning uh, the cow head, ma mi meaning the horse face. Those are the two guys that comes to pick you up when it's time to go. Um, so it could be the money that people just sprinkle on the floor to bribe um, those two um, guards is so to pave the way for the deceased to come back to this world or to make it easier for them to just move around, supposedly. Another one I heard from uh, my friends in Taiwan is that sometimes uh, they put like dead people's money, like the ones that you burn, on the floor and they hope that you pick it up. So that way you'll either get possessed, your body gets claimed, or somebody tries to marry you, which is a ghost. And usually when you pick that money up, um, yeah, you get all the stuff that comes with it. So supposedly you're not to touch it. You hear these mic disturbances? Um, it happened in a few places in this video. Um, it's not timing specific. It's actually location specific. Meaning when I backpedaled and went back to these areas, the same mic interferences um, were present. I don't have an explanation for it. It's just really weird.
think I just saw a house in the corner of my eye. Ah, yes. I don't know what it is, but um, I've been exploring many abandoned places in the past, but the houses that I come across in this place, for some reason, looks quite inhabited and uninhabited at the same time. It's a really weird feeling. Judging from the mosaic and the erosion and the deterioration that's from the gate, this place is prehistoric. For those of you who have a habit of whistling uh, during the Hungry Ghost Festival uh, this month, don't be whistling outside according to common superstition because uh, they think that that frequency is similar to what spirits speak. And when you whistle, you're kind of sending off the wrong signals saying that you might want to communicate with them. So it's up to you to believe that or not. I think this is the only place where the gate is actually open and um, there is a house behind there. But yeah, Wendy won't go in, so forfeited that idea. And here's another really creepy place. I think, at least. Uh, but I found some fungi, like, and yeah, creepy red lanterns. I always find that creeps me out. Um, yeah, this abandoned town's a bit bigger than we thought, so I think part of me is lost already. While appreciating the beauty and the quiescence of this place, the divider between the seats is supposed to keep homeless people from sleeping there, but seriously, I don't think homeless people would come all the way here to sleep on these benches. Mm -mm. Okay. Wow, it's like actually really quiet in here. Insane. Freaking insane. And this is especially true to guys um, who like to pee outside out in the open. Um, during this time, peeing in public, you might risk yourself peeing on individuals you may not want to. Now, after having a good view of the abandoned town, we are planning our way out. Which is probably not as easy as you think, because I personally am half lost. If you guys are familiar with the rituals that happens during this month, uh, usually people's burning incense or joss papers that uh, tributes to the ones in the underworld. Please don't get cheeky or try to touch the stuff while the rituals are going on. Supposedly, uh, the elder said, uh, interfering with the process will get you possessed somehow. Another very common one that you hear is if someone calls your name in the middle of the night, don't turn around, don't respond, and don't look back unless you want to lose your spirit. Another big no-no is uh, taking photos or video in the, the forest or in the middle of a plain field. Though these pictures look pretty nice, I must admit, in my humble opinion, of course, of myself, but supposedly you aren't supposed to do that because, um, yeah, you might invite other people to be in the photo. Um, only if I knew this when I was taking these photos, but um, I guess now it's less scary in retrospect. I guess ignorance is a bliss in this case, correct? Come to think of it, I think we actually came here at a good time because um, I heard that they were going to turn this place into uh, something in the future and that might make it inaccessible. So yeah, we lucked out. Another big no-no of all times, do not put chopsticks in the middle of the bowl and stabbing it into the middle of the rice because that is offerings to the deceased in both Chinese and Japanese culture, actually. 
one I found very interesting is don't go near temples uh, because the troubled spirits actually go seek help there. So you probably don't want to join that crowd. I lost my face mask. This one I effed up in retrospect. Don't tap someone on the shoulder because supposedly they say there is some baffle and one of those is on your shoulders. One on each shoulder, one on your head. You can't extinguish those fires. That's what keeps you alive. This is the best substitution for a face mask. Wendy's sweaty scarf. Okay, we step out. I look like a freaking thief. <sighs> I think I smell like Wendy's sweat right now. like our urban exploration stream uh, don't forget to you know check out the following videos and uh, subscribe of course and check out the playlist see you guys i hope we don't have to wait for another three years until we get to go urbex again and one thing i learned is that every time i go urbex with this person when i ask should we go where and they shall say no that's what i learned but let's not wait three years again it's too long Last piece of sage advice, don't take the last train home because that's not for us. Uh, I just fed the mosquitoes. Ay, 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 ay.